Whether you're a Pixar fan or a non-Pixar fan, can we all just agree to put Cars 2 in the rearview mirror? Let's just pretend like it never existed. Hey, Bobby. Who is that? That's, um, Jackson Storm. Yeah, he's one of the rookies. Huh. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Jackson Storm, right? Great race today. Wow. Thank you, Mr. McQueen. You have no idea what a pleasure it is for me to finally beat you. Oh, thanks. Wait, <laughs> hang on. Did you say meet or beat? I think you heard me. Cars 3 brings back Lightning McQueen and the whole Radiator Springs gang as he gets back to racing, but this time he's a little bit older in dealing with some new and faster competition. Pixar has made one bad movie in the 17 movies leading up to this one, and it was the one before this one. Can they right the ship? Or I guess I should say, get the car back on track? Here's five things you might want to know about Cars 3. The answer is yes. Thank the Lassiter. The answer is yes. Uh, we're back on track. This isn't a perfect movie, but I really did enjoy this. If you love Cars 1, we're getting back to what made Cars 1 lovable in the first place. And let's just start there with that being the first good thing. This gets us back to the formula we loved about the original Cars. The actual racing. What's going on with Lightning McQueen? That's a big thing we lost in Cars 2. It became almost more about Mater, or at least Mater and Lightning. And really, this series, this franchise, needs to be about Lightning McQueen... It needs to be a sports franchise. It's not a spy franchise. This feels like a sports movie about an aging sports star and gets us back to what we loved about the first one. The other thing the second one was missing uh, that is back here as well is this beautiful heart and beautiful message about what's going on in Lightning McQueen's life. We are really given an opportunity to see him grow as a human being, as an automobile. <laughs> We're given an opportunity to see actual growth and maturity happen in him, which is really beautiful because you can identify with it. There's also a message here about overcoming obstacles, overcoming barriers that aren't even your fault, that others put in your way, that I thought was beautiful as well. When Pixar is firing on all cylinders, they're doing this thing where they're activating both what you're seeing on the screen and also what you're feeling in your heart. And I think there's a lot of those moments here. Now, one of the ways it develops that heart is it takes its time with the story. And we're going to give this a yellow because I think for some, this will seem like a very slow movie, although I really enjoyed it. It's not like modern animated fare. Think Minions, think even some of the latest Pixar stuff, where it's a joke a minute, it moves really fast. This is a slow-moving ride, and I kind of loved it because it gave us more opportunity to really understand the story, to really understand these characters, those character beats, those story points in the in the thing that we need to see. I really felt like this movie took its time in a way that added to the maturity and the overall experience of what was going on here. And I don't think the kids were out of it either. I don't feel like they, at least the ones in my theater, got lost in the pace of the movie. But just fair warning, this is slower than most animated fare today. I really did have a good time with this movie, but it's not perfect. I wanted to go over a couple negatives, even though they're both, I think, fairly minor. One of them is this movie does get cliche at a couple points. There are a couple moments where you feel like you're reading from Chicken Soup from the Soul. Just the way something is phrased uh, seems very trite or cliche. I think it's very minor. For the most part, the emotion is built into what is going on on the screen. But there were a couple moments where I almost rolled my eyes because it was a little too on the nose. <laughs> The other minor negative I had in this uh, is that I wanted to laugh a little bit more, and I didn't. Uh, there are a couple reasons for this. Number one, it's not the kind of movie I think this wants to be. It doesn't want to be a big laugh-out-loud kind of comedy. It wants to be a more of a serious sports movie, and I appreciate that. I also appreciate the other reason. Mater is downplayed in this movie, and that's great. I actually think that's the right decision. I think they try to introduce another secondary sidekick kind of comic relief character, but she just doesn't kind of work in that way. Uh, I didn't feel like a lot of her jokes landed. So I was smiling still. I was having a good time. There's a good sense of humor here. Just not as many laughs as I would have hoped for. Mm -hmm. Overall, though, Cars 3 is a wonderful return to form for this franchise. I really did have a good time. Even with the minor flaws, I still give it a solid B. 
Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. We'll get to the best ever challenge here in a bit. Before we get there, though, uh, would love to have you along as part of this YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, comment, join the community. Having a lot of fun here. But beyond that, if you want to connect like on Twitter, we have a blast there as well. Just follow Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R. Uh, you can also listen to the podcast. It's called Sift Pop, S-I-F-T-P-O-P. Happens every single week. Uh, if you do podcasts, wherever you do them, uh, just search for Sift Pop, S-I-F-T-P-O-P. And if you don't do podcasts, but you're interested, hit me up. I'll teach you how to do podcasts. It's really not that hard and they're a lot of fun. Uh, also, thank you so much for your support. It continues to come in for this YouTube channel and honestly really helps with being able to do what I do here. So thank you for that. It's very humbling and I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to support, you can go to patreon.com slash your movie friend. All right, on to the best ever challenge where you name the best movie ever in a particular category. Also try to identify my choice. What is the best aging athlete movie ever? A movie about an aging athlete who is dealing with their aging. For me, it has to be the one where Aunt May and an Iron Man villain had a little thing. Aunt May and an Iron Man villain. Yep. Take a guess at mine in the comments. First person to get it right does get a point. Leave your choice there as well. And as always, click my face to subscribe. I'll give you a few extra seconds here. It's right there in the big circle.